Hi everybody, this is Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook and I'm here for another Friday read. Um, quick weather update, it is cloudy here, it rained all day yesterday, it's kind of dreary, but the plants need it, the grass needs it, so I'm not going to complain entirely about it, it's just a little gloomy. So let's catch up on what I've been doing. Today is what, the last day of the month? And I am happy to say that, well, I finished all of the books that I wanted to finish this month. I'll say it like that, and I'll tell you why I say it that way in a minute. So let's review quickly, because I think I'm going to do a wrap-up video, as everybody says that should do. And I will also do specific book chats on a couple of the books that I read. So I won't talk too long about them. So this one is The Map of Salt and Stars. You'll know that I finished this one and I did like it. It was a good book. So I finished that on early on. Um, another one that was on the list was Kane by um, Jean Toomer. And I just put it aside for now. We're not sure if I'm going to come back to it or when I'm going to come back to it. Um, in place of that one, I picked up um, and I didn't, oh, I didn't put it so you could see it, um, a really good um, ebook I got off of my, um, I think I got that in Libby. Um, and it's called Raceless in Search of Family, Identity, and the Truth um, About Where I Belong by Georgina Lawton. Very good book. Um, I definitely am going to do a book chat about it, and I, I might get a chance to record it today. Definitely next week I'm looking to get that one to you guys because I thought that was a really good one to talk about. And there's another one that I read that was um, really just um, impact me in a good way. And I definitely want to do a book chat about that one. So um, Raceless was great. Um, I think I really find it fascinating to talk about the concept of race um, and how it affects people and how... Um, it has been used um, so to to basically shape history and the present as well. So this is a really interesting book that I, I got a chance to read. Georgina um, is is uh, a, a born in Britain and um, raised by two white parents who she believed were both her parents. Um, only to find out later on that her one of her parents wasn't her parent. I don't know if I'm giving spoilers on this. I don't think so. Um, but it's her exploration of the concept of race and identity and, um, you know, uh, looking at things about how you're brought up, where you're brought up, what you're exposed to, um, and things like that. So it, it was really good. Um, lots of notes taken on it. So I definitely want to do a talk on that one. And I brought my tea because I can feel my throat. Now, should I go with one that's positive or negative? Well, oh yeah, here's it. Here it is. So I'm going to do this first and get it out of the way. Red Island House. Super excited about this book. When it, I, I pre-ordered it, I was excited. I love the cover. And um, it's by Andrea Lee. I started this book so many times and stopped so many times. I don't like to say anything negative about books, really, because I always feel like I say to you guys that somebody has put effort into writing a book. And it's not that this story probably isn't a, um, a good story. I just was not feeling motivated to continue on with the story. And as I continue to keep picking it up and looking at the date and saying, oh my God, I need to get this done. I, I want to read some other things next month. I just was like, why am I forcing myself to read if I don't want to read it? It may be the case like Kane, it might be it's the wrong timing. Maybe I could read it in the future or maybe not. Maybe it's just not, you know, what I'm um, curious about right now. And I think that I have so many things I'm actually getting ready to in um, the next few weeks to clean up one of my bookcases and really do a, do you need to keep it? No, or, you know, dump it situation. So I, um, 
I don't want to keep books that I don't think I'm going to read. I don't want to keep books just because I love the cover. I don't want to keep the books because I feel like for any other reason than I want to keep it because I want the book because I like having the book and the memory of the story. Um, so that said, I am going to, on one of my next videos, do this as a giveaway to somebody. So if one of you guys can read this book and then tell me what happens and tell me, well, we missed a great book. It's a great story. It starts out good. I just couldn't get into it. Um, and it follows this black female who is married to an Italian man. They moved to Madagascar and um, uh, he builds this big, huge house for them there. And it's her kind of reconciling herself with the idea of, uh, you know, of owning this property and on this island um, where all of the indigenous people are and feeling like she's doing what had been done in the past to the African continent in general. And um, so she's trying to work through that, but at the same time, her husband has hired a gentleman that's worked to oversee, he's kind of the manager of the property, but her um, ability to, and, and even the concept of calling her the mistress of the house, because they've got servants and people that are doing all different roles and the upkeep of this house, um, but her ability to fulfill that role is basically squashed by this manager and they don't get along and it's her struggle to try to to you know regain um, the confidence and connection with her husband so that she can then be the lady of the house um, I think maybe that's what turned me off is how uh, weak she appeared to me um, and you know according to the background she was supposed to be very educated and very strong woman and um, when she entered the relationship and then when they get to this house you know the she just became so weak so i just kept going you know so i'm not really i when you guys whoever you whoever wins this book you can tell me privately on a message what happens because i would i'm curious a little bit but not enough to keep going so i would have done it in this video but I think I'm going to do it on my wrap up. I'm going to do a giveaway for this. So if you want to get this book or an opportunity to get it, you watch my wrap up and I will do a giveaway for this book. So I didn't finish this, but I'm not holding it against myself that I didn't finish it, right? Because I did have another win. I did finish Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Indice. Um, I... Um, I went through this one very fast. It was a very um, fast read. I did read a little bit and then I followed, listened to the audio. I love the audiobook version. And um, and I'll share my thoughts on this when I do my wrap up. Um, but I did complete this one. So I'm happy. I, I feel like I've, I've achieved a lot. So then the other secret books that are two that I had that I didn't tell you guys about. Oh, but before I get to the secret book, the other book that I read um, that I told you guys about, actually, I added it in late, and that one is um, Afar, and it's by Leila Del Duca, and that one is a graphic novel that I found that had a black woman on the cover. Super excited about that. And let's see if I can get the picture up here so you can see it. Um, I finished that one as well. And so here's the cover. Really, really nice cover. Remember, we, this is the one. So I finished this one. The story follows this character, the, the girl, I can't even remember her name, and her young brother. Their parents are going off to make money for them so that they can, you know, because they're, they're having hard times. And, um... It follows her and her brother um, trying to take care of things while their parents are gone. I'll say that much, and then I'll talk about it more in the wrap-up. I enjoyed it, but I realized, you know, at the end, I was like, what? At the end? But it did say that this is a series. So this is the first book, but it, I think why do I want to say that this was written in 2000 and... I want to say 2017. I could be wrong. 
2000, yeah, 2017. So where's the book two? I just, I'm going to look online and see if there's a second, you know, next um, edition because that's a long time now. So we'll see. Because the way it ended, it was like, okay, it's it's not a complete story. So it's definitely written in the sense that it's going to be continuing on. So I did enjoy that. So then the two secret books that I didn't tell you guys about. Um, one is I hate um, by Talia Hibbert. And I read one of her books. I think I read her first book last year, I want to say. And that was the Chloe Brown um, book. Hold on. I'm going to find the I did put the covers in here so you could see. So, um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, by her. It's a um, a romance, you know, a contemporary book um, that Chloe Brown followed. Her, I don't know if you remember my talk about that. She, um, oh, I can't remember what the name the name is right now. It's just it's fate evaded me, but she has chronic pain. And um, I love that she wrote that into the story. <coughs> the author herself suffers from it. And so I like that that was in there. Um, but it was like a comedy um, romance, very funny, rom-com. So then I read the second one, which I can't remember was. And then this one is called After Your Age, Eve Brown. And it's the cover of it. Um, and it was just, I needed some fun and light especially with Purple Hibiscus, which I think was a very heavy book for me. Um, but At Your Age, Eve Brown follows Chloe's sister. So it's it's kind of neat because it's following each of the sisters in the books. Um, I think Danny Brown was the last one. Chloe, it was Chloe's first, Danny, and then this one is Eve. And um, Eve uh, is, you know, the, their, par their parents have a lot of money and they're trying to make sure that their children all are successful. And Eve is kind of the last one to kind of really, you know, spread her wings. Her parents are kind of worried that she's going to be like the partier and not really take things seriously. So they kind of give her an ultimatum and she ends up meeting the gentleman in this um, story that becomes her love interest um, who owns a bed and breakfast. And the story kind of continues from there. I won't spoil any more of it. But very cute story, um, you know, funny. Um, not as, I laughed a little, but not as much as I had in the past books. There's definitely um, always at least one thing that makes me laugh out loud in her books. And I just like them because they're light. So that's part of the Brown sisters. Uh, I don't know if they're doing, if she's going to do more. This is her more recent book. So there was that. The next book I really, really, really liked a lot, and I'm going to do a talk uh, book chat about it because it's important. Um, I've been kind of gathering and putting together like my um, my lists of things that I want to put as links when I do that. And this book is called Waste, One Woman's Fight Against America's Dirty Secret, and it's by Katherine Coleman Flowers, and I'm going to show you it like this. So um, in brief, Catherine Coleman Flowers grew up in um, this town that um, was very poor and was, was, was in what you consider the Black Belt. And um, she goes off, the book, the book shows how she goes off and she gets you know, um, her education, she goes off to college. And how when she comes back to where she lived, the town that she lived in, um, and I believe you say, you, it's called Lowden, I don't know if you say Lowden's County. It's really funny how you spell it, L-O-W-N-D-E-S County. So I don't know if it's Lowden's County or Lowden's County, but that's where she grew up. Um, or, and um, she starts to see the... Uh, lack of infrastructure for their septics and their their waste so you know there's houses and people that are living there and it's a predominantly black community um they have no they have like a pipe that comes out of their house and just all of the waste goes out in the yard um and they live in these trailers and she shows basically how um 
it's systematically they're kept in the situation because there's no way to get out. There's no way to get um, proper plumbing and things. And they can't afford it. And even affording it isn't just the issue. So she raises all these different issues in it. But then what she also does is that she realizes through um, her, you know, looking into this and then really becoming quite a, the advocate and, a, and an activist in this space, she starts to realize that there are a lot of other rural areas in the United States and not so rural areas um, that this is the case. That, you know, it's something that you, if you go and you see it or even read this book, you don't believe that this could be happening in the United States right now. Um, and because of the climate change and also because of the pandemic, it has made it even worse for these particular um, areas in the country. So it's a real important read. Um, you know, she left it with, um, you know, the, there's, you know, the things that she's talking about in there where they're still waiting on things. So um, very moving. I, it was one of those books that I would pick up and, and I kept wanting to talk to you guys about it, but I was like, no, wait, did she finish? Um, but it was one of those books that I was reading and I kept um, wanting to pick it up, even though the information is painful to hear about how these families and children are living. Um, I wanted to know more. Um, and so I'm definitely going to do a book chat on this and talk about her organization, the organization, some of the organizations that she worked with. Um, and very important, I think, even just to verbalize and to spread the word so people know about this, that this exists so that it can be addressed properly. So that was a really, really five star read for sure, but um, just a very important book that I got a chance to read and I'll definitely do a video on that. So now, what am I going to be reading this weekend, you ask? Huh. Well, there's a couple things going on. My friend Natalie at Curious Read, um, she has, she she did last year and this year again, she's doing, um, hosting a uh, Curious Reader, sorry, did I say read? Curious Reader. Um, she's hosting along with four other um, friends, including Heidi um, at my reading life. I'm going to try to shout out to Heidi too. Um, they are hosting a Springathon and it goes from May 1st to the 14th. I'm going to do a TBR video of what I plan to read for that because I do want to participate. This is the kind of time of year too that I like to read um, more nonfiction and nature books. I don't know if it's just, you know, the possibilities of spring, but it, it just always feels good this, this time of year. And I did do it last year, so I will participate in it this year. Um, they even have a group read and the name of the book I can, I have it in front of me. It's called The Way Through the Woods by Lit Won Long. Um, I'll talk more about it when I do my TBR video, um, but I'll leave Natalie's um, link down below if you want to go and see and get yourself started. So, cause it does start this weekend. Although it goes from the first to the 14th, I never do that. I go through the whole month cause 14 days is too stressful for me <laughs> to finish anything. Um, but they've kept, they've created prompts for it and made it very light and easy and nice so that you can just, you can just read one book. You don't have to read 6 million books and the prompts could all potentially go into one book. So you feel like very accomplished at the end and you feel um, more knowledgeable about a topic. So I have been compiling lists, look at all my little scrap papers here, of books that I want to read or that are potentials for that. Um, and then I've been doing potentials for my May um, books that I would like to read for in general. And then I've also been, you know, I'm all into lists. I've been writing a birthday book wish list because my birthday month is June. And so I'm trying to prepare for that. Like what books do I want to get, um, for my birthday? So I will definitely be doing that as well. So I think for this weekend, the two books that I had told you guys about, oh, they're not here. They're across the room. I see them. I'm just going to tell you the names of them and then I won't take any more of your time. Um, I think it's, um, oh gosh. Oh yeah. Wild Woman in the Blues was one of them and Liberty was the other one. So I will start one of those this weekend. Um, 
Liberty was historical fiction. Um, and I think, let's see, do I have the, I don't think I wrote down anything in here. I think, I think the Wild Women of, in the Blues was, uh, I don't remember, why do I feel like that's something to do with the Harlem Renaissance, but I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head, but those are the two that I'll probably pick in at, and then I will be, um, figuring out. I do want to do the read along with this Springathon with Natalie, but I want to pick another book that I'll, you know, read for for that. So I'll come back with a couple of videos. So you should expect from me a uh, book chat on waste. You can expect um, a book chat on, what was the other one I said I was going to do? Oh, Raceless. You can expect a book um, a video with my Springathon TBR, my May TBR. So yeah, so a lot more videos coming your way. I will definitely get those and some of those out next week, um, just to start off the month right. And I, I mean, I'm happy with what I read. I think that I was a little concerned at first because I, you know, I had two books that I kind of didn't finish, but I feel comfortable with my reasoning and my logic. And I have so many other things that wonderful, great books that I want to read that are going to grab me. So I'm not going to spend time with things that don't, you know, pull me in um, as fast as it should. So, so there's that. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Let me know what you guys are reading. Um, let me know if any of you are going to do the Springathon, if you're aware of it, if you're not, it's a good one. It's a fun one. Um, and, and you can also read for that too. It doesn't have to be nonfiction. It can be fiction books. So you can find a fiction book that fits those prompts um, that um, that can work as well. I should make that video today the, to the, my um, potential TBR so that I can get that to you guys too soon so you can do it along. I mean, like I said, mine's going to go through May. <laughs> I can't just do two weeks, but I'm going to try to see if I can get one done at, um, at least um, for the month of May. But anyways, I'm doing well. I, I want to hear what you guys are reading and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. -bye.